Waging war on corruption. Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. By the way, they've been purging the military, trying to put more globalists in right now. And now a third banker, top banker this week, commits suicide. They've had a whole bunch commit suicide last week, week before that. That's up on InfoWars.com. Frothing panic on school bus over Power Ranger toy gun. Amnesty will cause illegal immigration to explode. Department of Homeland Security censors report on deadly force. Google patent seeks to transmit your cell phone video to law enforcement. That is so out of control. Girl banned from selling cupcakes proves government out of control. Georgia police strip search drivers during minor traffic stops. Super Bowl fans want TSA administered proctology exams. I'm not kidding. That's all up on InfoWars.com. I should have covered that earlier. Joel, we got about five minutes left here. I want you to finish up with the scenario. We cover it in the film, Strategic Relocation. It's in your book. They're both available. The film exclusively at InfoWarsStore.com. And it's just invaluable film to watch, invaluable book to have. And when you've studied the country and the world, it's just incredible how much you've traveled. Now, this is something everybody should be thinking about in this in insane world. But, but finishing up with the scenario of the super weapons then being rolled out. That's right. In other words, there are secret black budget weapons that the U.S. has been developing for years and they have not revealed to the American people and will not be used to defend us against this nuclear first strike. PDD-60 was signed by President Clinton, which instructed our nuclear forces to be prepared to uh, retaliate only after absorbing a nuclear first strike. General Butch Needle of the Marine Corps said, retaliate with what? After you've absorbed it, and that's exactly what the globalists want. Now, our missile forces still intend and still think they're going to get the orders to launch on warning. And launch on warning is a very important uh, tactic. It means that the one who launches first, actually his missiles, because they're ballistic, end up attacking silos that are empty. If we've launched before their missiles arrive on our soil, we launch our missiles, then the one who launches second is the one who gets the most damage done to the other side. But if we absorb that nuclear first strike, all of our missiles in the silos will be hit. We won't have anything to retaliate with except half of our nuclear submarines, which are being downgraded from 20 missiles now to 14. They are dismantling, disarming, even without, even as the Russians are building new submarines. You can see the total setup taking place on every front. And what do you make of 36 uh, of the silo commanders fired, almost all the top brass over the missiles? Uh, I mean, and I mean, I was told by a high-level source about missing nukes at Dias. That's a real story. I mean, what does all that mean? Well, you know, the nuclear, this stuff has actually been going on for a long time. And the, there's, the nuclear missile force has been in disarray, and there's been a lot of disgruntled officers that stand watch for days at a time. I mean, it's not a, a decent assignment anymore. So there has been cheating on their exams. There has been some drug use and other things. It's only being brought out now because the press is getting ready to make a major push against we don't need all these nuclear missiles and to de degrade uh, and, and to uh, you know sell more disarmament. As I say, it's disingenuous when you don't include Red China. When you only have deals with Russia, and Red China's still out there. I mean, this it shows that it's a sham. That we're simply well, obviously, we're almost down to nothing now. We don't need to give them any more any weapons. But meanwhile, the government wants to obsess on veterans and gun owners all day. Homeland Security says we're the main threat while they fund Al Qaeda. And then Russia and China are arming to the teeth, and the West is doing every provocation to give them the moral high ground. It's the same old British intel model uh, that we saw with Pearl Harbor and the rest of it. Get your enemy to attack you so you have the moral high ground. Well, let me finish with my scenario of how I think this war is going to play out. I think, you know, there's going to be a major destruction of these 12 to 15 cities. The Russians and Chinese will try to blackmail the U.S. and the, uh, Western Europe into submission. Our leaders will not succumb to the blackmail. They'll come out and create a new holy war against Russia and China and bring out those space-based and other secret weapon systems to stop Russia and China from any more damage while we regroup. And it'll be based upon NATO, which probably won't be hit in the initial strike. 
and they'll go ahead and start to uh, attack Russia primarily. We'll have to have you back I about this. We're out of time. Great job. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record, reports documented, a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gate. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. through the lies and disinformation it's alex jones on the gcn radio network welcome back to the alex jones show i'm david knight i'm going to be finishing out the show today and i'm going to have at the bottom of the hour the police chief who was fired because he went to a constitutional sheriff's and police and peace officers association meeting he was singled out by the TSA. We interviewed him on Prison Planet TV last night on the Nightly News. And if you didn't see that interview, we're going to have excerpts from that. We're going to have an update from him live at the bottom of the hour as to what his current status is. But what they did was they shut down an entire police force, small town police force, but they shut down the entire force because of a TSA agent who had a vendetta with him. Now, this is something that is much wider than that. But what we're seeing here is the arbitrary exercise of power. This is something that we see happening with the president, with his executive orders, and it permeates the entire government. It's systemic. It goes all the way down to local law enforcement, in many cases, as we've seen with the police. But certainly, the TSA is a large part of it. And it's not just that. It's not just their petty vindictiveness. This is part of a total surveillance grid with the NSA. We've interviewed William Benny before. Not too long ago, we interviewed him on this radio program. And he was the former global technical director of the NSA. So unlike a lot of these billionaire critics of critics who are opposing the NSA, they say there's nothing to worry about. Why is everybody getting so upset? People like Mark Andreessen, who founded Netscape, 
They're pushing back on this and say, we just don't understand the technical issues. Well, you know who does understand the technical issues? The guy who worked for them for over three decades, who was the technical director of the NSA globally. He resigned, became a whistleblower because he saw the criminal actions that were taking place. And he knows fully well what their capabilities are. And when I talked to him, one of the things that he told me was that he had monitored for years the Soviet Union as well as East Germany. He knows how this tyranny rolls out. He's seeing the exactly the same things happening now, only much more sophisticated, much more technologically sophisticated. He knows exactly how that's playing out. And he had said not too long ago that we are this far from a police state holding his fingers very close to each other. And then recently, just before the interview, he said, we now have a police state. Well, how does this police state work? Well, guess what? It turns on the police themselves. In many cases, just like this police chief here in a small town in New Mexico, it had been pretty much insulated against the, the police state effects that many of us feel as citizens. And he had purposely avoided flying just for that type of reason. He knew what was there. He wasn't totally naive. He was going to a constitutional sheriff's and peace officers association. So he, had, he knew what was going on. This is a guy of integrity. But and his, his first instinct, as you'll hear in this interview, was to cooperate, as all of our instincts are. But after a while, you realize that the government is so far over the edge. They keep pushing, pushing, pushing that at one point you assert your constitutional rights. Listen to this interview. This is how he laid it out last night on the Nightly News. Myself and retired Sheriff Rene Rivetta, who was at that time serving as the deputy chief for my agency, we were in route to attend this conference in Las Vegas. And uh, due to former investigations that I've been involved in, um, very high profile case, my name was changed legally through the courts and it was sealed under record. And so I have two different names. Uh, I haven't flown in years by choice because of the conduct of TSA. Mm -hmm. But for this particular event, I had really had no choice. And so I told uh, Sheriff Rivetta, let's go talk to a TSA supervisor, explain you know our circumstances, because my biggest concern was regarding my driver's license. The expiration date had just expired. So we go upstairs and we speak to a supervisor. She was very cordial. We explained to our circumstances. And uh, she said, not a problem. It's within one year of expiration, so you can fly. There's no issue. I said, you know, thank you so much. We go downstairs. We go to the ticket counter, present identification again. We're, present, we're you know, provided with our tickets and our boarding passes. We book in our luggage. And then here comes uh, a young officer from the Albuquerque Aviation Police. Um, and, and he's being quite stern in his demeanor and so forth. He says, I need to speak with you guys. Okay. So myself and Sheriff Rivetta goes off to the side with this individual and another officer, and we speak with him. He demands to see identification. Uh, we provide him with identification, and uh, he starts questioning us. I said, you know, what's going on? And he says, well, you were, you were named as a suspicious person. I said, really? I said, you know, what is so suspicious about me? He said, did you go upstairs? And I said, yeah, I did. I, I spoke with the TSA person up there. But what were you discussing with him? I said, I had a question about my, my flight itinerary and, and any problems that may arise from an expiration date and so forth. I don't recall the exact verbiage I used, but that was the gist of the conversation. And so ultimately, um, I finally said, you know, am I being charged with something? Am I free to go? He gave us our information back, and we were sent on our way. And um, we, we go upstairs through the TSA screening. Uh, Sheriff Rivetta was allowed right, right through. When I approached, uh, the lady asked me where I was going. I tell her that I was going to Las Vegas. And she then asked, what was my business there? And I, I made the statement that that's private, and I kept walking. So then I get up to the um, uh, the scanner, and I put all my stuff through the scanner. I went through the metal detector, and I was forced to go through it three times. Uh, I didn't have any metal on me you know, that I was aware of, but it kept going off. Nonetheless, I get through the thing, get all my stuff back. And I start walking towards the turnstile, and I'm approached by a man in a dark suit who flaps open a wallet and shuts it and puts it back in his pocket. I don't know who he was with. He didn't ever show me a card or nothing like that. I don't have anything from him. He was not wearing a uniform, but he claimed to be a federal investigator. Those mm -hmm. were his words. And so he want, demands to see identification, and I tell him, you know, we've already been through this. I've already presented my identification at least three times. To, to various officials, what's going on? And he told me that I was a person of interest, that I was uh, listed as being suspicious. Hmm. So I, I comply, I give him my credentials, and um, he, he really just 
sort of belabored the point, and I finally just asserted my First Amendment rights, my Fourth Amendment rights, and it really... Uh,